Good Tuesday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Before we get to today's top news stories, let's take a quick look outside our weather window. We were pretty limited this afternoon on what cameras we could use. A lot of the cameras were socked in with some low clouds and fog. And this camera from this afternoon from our Omi Gardens camera, uh, you can see actually a little bit of sunshine off in the distance looking down at the Columbia River. And it was that kind of day after some pretty darn heavy snow shower activity this morning. Then we had some rain late morning, melted most of the new snow that we picked up. And now just some mild temperatures with some cloudy conditions. But I'll tell you what, our forecast is going to become much wetter as we get into our Wednesday outlook. Here's our extended outlook that we just received from the National Weather Service today. And as you can see, the map on the left are temperatures in that red and orange colors well above normal for temperatures as we go all the way through the end of this month and into February. And that map on the right, as far as precipitation goes, notice that much, much greener than it should be. And that means we will be warm and wet for the next week to maybe even two weeks ahead. We'll talk more weather coming up a little bit later on. And now a few of the stories we're following for you tonight. A Douglas County judge must consider whether the killer in a 2013 murder at Sun Cove Resort was properly sentenced. After a stray bullet hit a building on a nearby landowner's property in December, the state decided last week to end target shooting from Road 12 of the Goyd Seeps Wildlife Area Unit near Afreda. And a contractor on Monday began work on clearing up a small amount of diesel fuel that spilled into Salmon Creek in Okanagan County after a snow plow went off the road and ended up partially in that creek. But first we begin tonight, the Kashmir woman who led deputies on a January 4th highway st uh, high speed chase near Rock Island must answer to four criminal charges. 22-year-old Jessica Haley Fisk remains jailed on counts of fleeing police, hit and run, reckless endangerment, and driving on a suspended license. She was scheduled for arraignment today in Douglas County Superior Court. In addition to the Rock Island chase, in which she allegedly hit a guardrail and an unoccupied car, Fisk is also charged with vehicular assault for an April 1st auto wreck in Spokane, which injured three people. A Douglas County judge must consider whether the killer in a 2013 murder at Sun Cove Resort was properly sentenced. Oscar Alden of Snohomish, who's now 30, is serving a 19-year sentence for fatally shooting Tom Max of Lake Taps. Max was down on all fours at the resort near Orondo when Alden shot him once in the head. Alden says his defense lawyer should have included and introduced evidence of his attention deficit hyperactivity disorder to argue for a shorter sentence. The state court of appeals now says the superior court must hold a hearing on the matter. Alden remains in custody at Clallam Bay Corrections Center. Well, after a stray bullet hit a building on a nearby property in December, the state decided last week to end target shooting from Road 12 of the Gloyd Seeps Wildlife Area Unit near Afreda. The Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife said with several residences and buildings within range of a rifle bullet, as well as hunters and anglers in the surrounding areas, it's just too dangerous. Washington Department of Department of Fish and Wildlife Land Operations Manager Rich Fingers said the area has a long history of problems with target shooting. The landowners report a bullet hitting his building was investigated and confirmed by the Grant County Sheriff's Office. Well, a contractor on Monday began work on cleaning up a small amount of diesel fuel that spilled into Salmon Creek in Okanagan County after a snowplow truck went off the road and ended up partially in that creek. The accident happened Sunday about 7 a.m. when the plow driver was backing off Salmon Creek Road at the intersection of Spring Cooley Road and then slid on the ice into the creek. It took two large tow trucks to get that snow plow off its side and back on the road. The driver of the plow was not injured. The State Department of Ecology is providing technical assistance at the cleanup site about four miles west of Omac. Well, coming up next, a longtime Douglas County PUD board member will join a special national team of public power executives. The Wenatchee Valley College Foundation has received a grant of $20,000 from the Names Family Foundation to support student athletes. And the U.S. Forest Service is offering people of all ages an opportunity to venture out into the snow-covered Okanagan Wenatchee National Forest. I'm Grant Olson and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News.
Arctic Refrigeration and Heating, serving North Central Washington, is proud to offer the finest heating and cooling air quality products, along with prompt and professional customer service since 1984. Regardless of the temperature outside, Arctic is here for you. Arctic offers a variety of services, residential and commercial heating, air conditioning, commercial refrigeration, as well as planned fall and spring maintenance for the overall well-being of your system. Call Arctic Refrigeration and Heating for your heating and cooling needs. Family roles change with time. You may find yourself being an unpaid caregiver to a loved one. Caregiving can be rewarding, but also stressful. Taking care of yourself is vital. Aging and Adult Care of Central Washington has low or no cost services for unpaid caregivers, such as in-home support, care supplies, and counseling. Connect in your local area by calling Aging and Adult Care at 800-572-4459 and mention you're interested in caregiver support. When it comes to our community, you can count on Town Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram to be invested. From supporting community college scholarships through a concert series or participating in a local high school homecoming event, Town Chrysler has always put the community first. Buying local supports the jobs and programs you care about most. When it comes time to buy your next new or used car, SUV or truck, remember, there's no reason to leave town. Welcome back. In another news, a longtime Douglas County PUD board member will join a special national team of public power executives. Commissioner Ron Skagen, who's been on the Douglas PUD board since 2007, was named to a three-year term on the Policy Makers Council. That's of the American Public Power Association. The council lobbies federal lawmakers on issues that affect publicly owned electrical utilities. Skagen previously served on the APPA's board of directors. Meanwhile, the Wenatchee Valley College Foundation has received a grant of $20,000 from the Names Family Foundation to support student athletes. The Names Family Foundation was established in 1996 by Scott and Sis Names, who shared a passion for philanthropy and a deep interest in health and fitness. The grant will be used to support student athletes attending Wenatchee Valley College. The Wenatchee Valley College Foundation recently received support from both the Names Family Foundation and Beth and Dennis Dobbs for the renovation of the Smith Gym Locker Rooms. Beth Dobbs is the granddaughter of Scott and Sis Names. The Dobbs were also a major contributor of the Smith Gym Floor remodel back in 2016. The U.S. Forest Service is offering people of all ages an opportunity to venture out into the snow-covered Okanagan Wenatchee National Forest. Snowshoeing tours are being offered in the Blewett Pass area that begins on Saturday and continues through March 28th. There will be five guided outings for adults and children at Swak Campground and Wenatchee Ridge with no previous snowshoeing experience required. The guides will talk about plants, animals, birding, animal tracking, and general winter forest ecology. People interested can make reservations through the Discover Your Northwest website at discovernw.org. To offset the cost of the program, a donation of $15 per person is suggested. For more information, contact the Cleelum Ranger District, and that phone number is 509-852-1044. You're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Coming up next, tonight's feature story and your complete local weather forecast. That and much more still to come on the NCW Life Evening News. Stay with us. Bring the whole family up to Stormy Mountain Brewing and local public house in historic downtown Chelan. Applewood smoked brisket, street style tacos, and our award-winning barbecue rubs and sauces. Our meals pair perfectly with our exciting lineup of craft ales made right here in Chelan. We've got room for big groups or give us a call for catering. So grab the kids and check out the fun at Stormy Mountain Brewing and local public house located in the heart of Chelan.
It's a marvelous markdown at Sangster Buick GMC. Hi, Corey Sangster, and we're ending the year with a bang. Take advantage of below market pricing on our entire used vehicle inventory. We've stocked up on a great selection of all and four wheel drives just in time for winter. Virtually every make and model, all price point, and $49 down delivers. Pick a vehicle, pick a payment, and drive away with $49 down. Before you buy, compare price, service, and selection. December is a marvelous markdown at Sangster Buick GMC or SangsterMotors.com. Reinventing FaceTime here at Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa, a new family owned and operated business located in the heart of downtown Wenatchee, owner Andrew Vickery brings forth years of experience to help you transition your backyard into a place where memories are made, family time is looked forward to, and friends are always welcome. Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa offers many different styles and sizes of artesian spa. Let us help you add hydrotherapy to your already healthy lifestyle. Welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. An NCW Life investigation has found a Douglas County Sheriff's deputy left the department under a cloud of controversy last year. In tonight's feature story, NCW Life's Jefferson Robbins looked into it and has the story. It started with an $800 scratch to a Douglas County squad car. From there it snowballed until it cost Deputy Travis Morley his career. Morley joined the Douglas County Sheriff's Office in July 2017. Sometime around August 10, 2019, his newly issued squad car struck a delineator, one of those upright reflective strips that mark the edge of the highway shoulder. At a vehicle training with fellow police officers August 14th, Morley described how the delineator snapped back and dented his hood when he drove over it at high speed. But when he reported the accident to his superiors, he wasn't able to clearly tell them where and how it happened. To find out, sheriff supervisors looked at recorded videos from Morley's onboard vehicle cameras. They found that several days' worth of videos were missing from the device memory, including the day of the accident. Morley said he deleted them. Our investigator found that he, he believed that there was some uh, honesty issues going on. Sheriff Kevin Morris ordered an internal investigation. Deputies' vehicle recorders are always gathering video, but they're supposed to only record sound when a deputy's car is running with lights and sirens activated. There's alarmed and unalarmed. The unalarmed have no audio. Those are the ones where you're just driving around. Um, those are purged through the system. The first in is the first out, so once the DVR is full, it just, it just falls off. It gets deleted. When Douglas County technicians examined Morley's system, they found his settings were different. The device was set to the manufacturer's default and sound was recorded constantly on his car's backseat camera. If possible, I'd like to just get a Samsung through um, Walmart, same price as that one was. We have no idea why that occurred. We've told our, our folks, if you find that it's happening, you let us know and we will delete the audio uh, immediately because it, it, you know, Washington State is two-party consent. and. Uh, and I expect to give our deputies that type of privacy. They know that it's recording when they are um, you know, on a call. Morley said he'd been deleting unalarmed videos because he didn't want his private conversations and phone calls on record. Technicians managed to recover more than 500 files Morley had deleted, but none showed video from the accident. And one of the videos Morley deleted was taken while he was running lights and sirens to answer a call. Sergeant Jason DeMeyer managed the investigation he said Morley gave false statements during their interviews and multiple conflicting answers to questions. And you're telling me that, that you're okay if you believe something one time that is not fact and put it down on paper for everybody to believe until you're called on it and then you actually go check to see if that's true or not. At the point in time that I put it on paper, I believed it to be true. Morley also spoke to potential witnesses about the investigation despite official warnings not to. DeMeyer soon learned that Morley carried on extensive text and voice communications on personal business using his department's cell phone. He made multiple calls and texts to a woman who was a witness in a major theft. DeMeyer said the contact was inappropriate and violated department policy on dealing with witnesses while a case is still open. County phone records showed Morley used his department phone at nearly three times the rate of any Douglas County deputy. DeMeyer found Morley had committed 13 violations of sheriff's department policies and directives including tampering with car cam video, mishandling vehicles and equipment, and lack of truthfulness. On November 14th, Morley resigned prior to a hearing with Sheriff Morris. Given the facts of the case, Morris said he likely would have fired the deputy. There's a saying in our profession, and certainly in this office, you only say it because it rhymes, if you lie, you die. 
And what that means is if you're dishonest, you cannot be a law enforcement officer for us. Requests to Morley for comment through Facebook messages and relayed through the union that represents Douglas County Sheriff's deputies were not answered. Jefferson Robbins, NCW Life. Time now for a check of your North Central Washington weather forecast. And before we get to the details, there's lots of them today. Let's check outside in our SkyFi tower cameras. And there were pretty limited to what cameras we could use from this afternoon. We did find this one from our Rondo Rock uh, camera, and it's looking back down the Columbia River. Of course, you can see Turtle Rock right here. And this is the reason we were limited. A lot of low hanging clouds around North Central Washington today, and that meant some foggy conditions after that morning snow. Even even some misty rain at times out there today and even some sunshine trying to peek through at times around north central Washington. High temperatures though, it wasn't a bad day at all today, 36 degrees and that's exactly where we should be for this time of year on uh, what is today, January 22nd I guess, uh, 31 the overnight low, 25 is where we should be for this time of year. Record high, 48 degrees back in 2011, record low, one below zero and that was set in 1962. That that should be upgraded now. We did. I did see a different number late this afternoon. That's eight hundredths of an inch that we have picked up now from that little bit of precipitation this morning. So this number should be actually thirty seven hundredths and I'll adjust that as we get into tomorrow. But that's my mistake. But thirty seven hundredths now since the first of the year and eleven point two inches of snowfall. That's this season and this season goes back to about November 1st. Sunrise seven thirty nine and the sun set this afternoon getting later now at four forty five. Let's take a peek now at how our Wednesday hump day weather shapes up. And one thing you will notice, much warmer temperatures. And boy, we are going to see some mild readings over the next six or seven days. Lower 40s, Moses Lake, Afreda, and Quincy. We'll see upper 30s, Wenatchee, Ellensburg, mid 30s. Then as we get a little bit higher elevations up into Eniad, Chelan, OMAC, high temperature tomorrow. Really not bad for this time of year at 37 degrees. Surface loop time now. Let's begin with tonight. We'll see mostly cloudy skies. There is a chance for isolated showers, but I think that will be very, very late tonight. It will be mild overnight as well. And look at the size of this storm system off the coast right now, and that's going to bring us a warm and wet southwesterly flow over the next few days. Some people call it the Pineapple Express. Some people call it a large atmospheric river of moisture. No matter what you call it, we're going to see wet weather on Wednesday, an 80% chance of rain. It will be warm tomorrow. Thursday, we could see heavy rain at times. In fact, maybe up to a quarter of an inch possible. The green and yellow areas where we could really see some heavy rain, but most of Washington, hardly any snow. Most of us will see rain on Thursday, and that trend will continue right into the end of the week on Friday with another 70% chance for mainly morning rain showers on Friday. We will see warmer temperatures too. And folks, we are talking mid 40s to upper 40s as we get into the upcoming weekend. Cloudy skies, our chances for rain continuously go down as we make our way through this forecast. And as I mentioned, very, very warm temperatures statewide. We could see mid to upper 50s around the Tri-Cities this weekend. Sunday, cloudy skies again, a 30% chance of just scattered showers. And once again, very mild temperatures. We're talking 10 to 20 degrees above normal as we get into the upcoming weekend. Monday then to start our next work week, mostly cloudy skies, just isolated showers. And we will remain on the warm side with temperatures at least, at least in the Wenatchee Valley, 5 to 15 degrees above where we should be. Let's take a look now at your Patriot Plumbing, Heating and Cooling 7-day forecast. 30 degrees, a very mild overnight low tonight, and then a very rainy period comes our way, almost like a Seattle-like weather pattern. We'll see an 80% chance of rain on Wednesday, a 70% chance of rain on Thursday and Friday. Notice the warm-up, though, as we get into the end of the week. 44 degrees on Friday, still that chance for rain on Saturday at 50 percent 42 are high and then our chance for rain goes down but our temperatures stay pretty mild into the lower 40s and that's a look at your local weather forecast coming up next tonight sports report with eric granstrom and more as the ncw life evening news continues right after this Local Myth Pizza, we believe in real food, freshly prepared with only premium ingredients. Our cheeses are imported from Italy. Our sauces, dressings, and even our sausages are made in-house fresh daily. 
Featuring Northwest craft beers and 30 Chelan Valley wines and ciders. Family fun and amazing food. Eat local, drink local, and be local at Local Myth Pizza. Come see why Sunset Magazine says you can't beat Local Myth Pizza. I'm Tom from Alpine Air Heating and Cooling. At Alpine Air, we think of ourselves as customer service oriented retailers. When you make an appointment, please visit our store, meet our people, see our shop. We are serious about heating and air conditioning. Carrier and Alpine Air are offering huge factory rebates and financing options for all your needs. Turn to the experts at Carrier and Alpine Air. Call for your free replacement estimate. Heat and air, call Alpine Air, 662-6846. With TV advertising, what we want to do is more deeply connect with the community. People spot me in different parts around North Central, you know, Costco and Wenatchee say, hey, you're the pizza guy. And so they wouldn't know that if it weren't for the, for the TV commercials we've done. We've been here so long that people already know who we are and what we do, but to have that image flash on their television screen as opposed to just hearing in the radio or seeing in the newspaper. I just love the fact that we can actually put our finger on when a customer comes in and says, I saw your ad. It's becoming increasingly difficult in this digital age to know where are your customers listening or watching, because I watch all the different channels that they watch too, like Cooking Channel, History Channel, and so it was wonderful to be able to be on there. I would say that uh, if you wanna do business in Wenatchee, then you should connect with the people of Wenatchee, and there's no better way to do that than with NCW Life. It's estimated that one-third of Americans do not have a financial plan. At DA Davidson, their advisors are working to change that because they understand the importance of planning for the future. At DA Davidson, they believe in partnering together to build a strategy tailored to your needs. They spend the time and have the knowledge to help keep your financial future on track. Let DA Davidson Financial Advisors of Wenatchee put the strength of advice to work for you. It's a sports update on the NCW Life Channel. And a happy Tuesday to you. Wenatchee Valley had a rare Monday doubleheader at W.B. Smith Gymnasium last night. On the women's side, the Lady Knights erased a six-point deficit at the end of the third quarter with a big 27-point fourth quarter to beat Yakima Valley 74-68. Carrie Ann Kunkel again led WVC with 21 points, while Natalie Andreas kicked in 15. Lady Knights improved to 13-6 overall with the win and 4-2 and in conference play. Next up, a trip to Moses Lake Wednesday to face Big Ben. That'll be at 5.30 in the afternoon. On the men's side last night, Wenatchee Valley used a 50-point second half to put away Yakima Valley 85-64. Malik Parsons pumped in 14 points to uh, lead while Isaac Jones provided a spark off the bench also with 14. Chance Michaels and Abdul Abdullah each had 12 as Wenatchee Valley improved to 16-3 and on the season overall. 4-2 and two in conference play. Knights will tip it up with Big Ben on the road Wednesday at 7.30. Here's uh, what's on tap on the prep schedule for today. First in girls bowling. The season's winding down as Wenatchee was hosting West Valley at Eastmont Lanes today. A win over the Rams today would set up the battle for the regular season Big Nine Championship Thursday between the Panthers and Eisenhower. That's down in Yakima. Eastmont also on the road today at Davis and Minda Lanes. We'll have the results for you tomorrow morning on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Wenatchee Panthers swim team and dive team, I should say, hosting West Valley at Wenatchee High School in the pool today. Wenatchee leads the Big Nine at 4-0 while Eastmont and Moses Lake are right behind at 3-1. Also on the mats tonight, it's all about the Central Washington Athletic Conference. If Rada has a non-league match at Royal, that gets underway at 6. Quincy has a double duel with East Valley and Toppenish on the road at Toppenish tonight. That gets underway at 7 o'clock. Cashmere girls will try to keep their unbeaten season alive tonight in Leavenworth with a Caribou Trail League game at Cascade. It gets underway at 5.45. Also, the start time for OMAC in Chelan in North Central B League play tonight. Eniat's hosting Moses Lake Christian while Bridgeport plays in Manson. That's later on at 6 o'clock. Boys schedule looks the same, just the different start times. Cashmere travels to Cascade at 7.15. Chelan's hosting OMAC at 7.15. The Mustangs and Trojans tip it up in Manson at 7.30. Eniat hosts Moses Lake Christian tonight 
at 7.30 as well. Here's what we have on the sports broadcast schedule for the NCW Live Channel this week. It begins tonight with a re-airing re of the Wenatchee Eastmont girls basketball game from the Town Toyota Center back on January 10th. I'll be along courtside with Grant Olson on your play-by-play -play tonight. That begins at 7 o'clock. It'll be another doubleheader Thursday with Hockey Night first at 7, featuring last Friday's game between the Wenatchee Wild and Cowichan Valley Capitals. Then at 9 o'clock, I'll be a mat side at Eastmont High High School where the Wildcats host the Eisenhower Cadets in Big Nine Wrestling. If you missed the Eastmont Wenatchee Boys game from the Town Toyota Center earlier this month, we'll re air that coming up on Friday at 7 o'clock. I'll be along with Grant on the call there. Then on Saturday, Grant will be courtside for Wenatchee High School's matchup with the uh, Panthers hosting a girl boy doubleheader against the Davis Pirates. Our pregame for the girls begins at 5 30. The boys' game gets underway at 7 30. You can watch that live right here on your home for local sports the NCW Life Channel. Well, today's the day we are finding out the 2020 induction class in the National Baseball Hall of Fame. This year, Yankee fans celebrating Derek Jeter being elected into the hall. We already knew that Veterans Committee had selected Ted Simmons and Marvin Miller to the hall, while last year's class included six inductees, the 2020 class just three. Speaking of the Hall of Fame, there will be uh, two new inductees and one team entered into the Wenatchee Valley College Hall of Fame next Friday. Carissa Martin Harley played women's basketball from 1999 to 2001. She'll be inducted. Also, uh, the uh, longtime supporter of athletics at Wenatchee Valley College, Dalton Thomas. And <clears throat> in addition, excuse me, the 1971 ANWAC football championship team will be inducted into the Hall of Fame. Going to be a great evening. It's also a fundraiser for the Follow Your Dreams scholarship auction. All begins next Friday, January 31st at 5.30 at the Jack and Edna McGuire Student Recreation Center on the campus of Wenatchee Valley College. Dinner and drinks included with your $75 ticket. They're available by calling 682-6771. That's uh, local number 509-682-6771. WVC induction ceremony for the Hall of Fame next Friday. That's a look at sports news. I'm Eric Grandstrom on the NCW Life Channel. Grant, back to you. Thanks a lot, Eric. And recapping tonight's top story, the Cashmere woman who led deputies on a January 4th highway chase near Rock Island must answer to four criminal charges. 22-year-old Jessica Haley Fisk remains jailed on counts of fleeing police, hit and run, reckless endangerment, and driving on a suspended license. She was scheduled for arraignment today in Douglas County Superior Court. In addition to the Rock Island chase in which she allegedly hit a guardrail and an unoccupied car, Fisk is also charged charged with vehicular assault for an April 1st auto wreck in Spokane, which injured three people. Now let's check in with Dan Koontz for a look at what's coming up tomorrow morning on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Dan. Thank you, Grant. Join me Wednesday morning live at 7 a.m. We'll have your latest weather forecast. We'll have your latest news headlines. We'll talk sports. Uh, who's going to make it into the Hall of Fame? We'll know by 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. We'll talk about that. Also, everything that you're used to. And in the second half of this program, Stevie Hare, our special news correspondent, has a brand new program. It's called In Focus, and he had a chance to sit down with Brian Burnett, the sheriff of Chelan County. You'll see, and you'll see that entire interview tomorrow in the second half of Wake Up in Anchee Valley. We'll see you live here from this very studio at 7 a.m. on Wednesday. Grant, back to you. See you tomorrow morning, Dan. And that's going to do it for our newscast tonight. For more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website at ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-6295. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks for joining us and have a great night. Caitlin Hedershey, the producer of the NCW Life magazine. Each week, I'm bringing you a look behind the scenes of the faces, places, and events that make North Central Washington the place we call home. Tune in every weekday for an in-depth look at a new topic each week. From local artists in their studios to businesses breaking barriers that might surprise you and everything in between. 
Join me on the NCW Life magazine right here on the NCW Life channel. Coming home should never be a chore. Let Merry Maids of Wenatchee customize all your cleaning needs. Weekly, bi-weekly, special occasion. Do you have a vacation home that needs cleaning? We clean them too. Locally owned and operated, let Merry Maids do the cleaning while you focus on your family and friends. Merry Maids has special offers to fit your budget. Request your free cleaning estimate today. 509-663-1710. 